Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for clicking to watch another highly questionable alternative build. These alternative builds aren't meant to be meta, but a functioning afterthought of game mechanics. Today we're going to look at Sentinel DPS Steel Path Disruption. Yes, you heard right. As dumb as that sounds, we're going to be using our Sentinel to kill the Demolists. No, we aren't using it as a primer. It's the actual DPS. Keep watching if you want to see this meme unfold. So around the time when Corpus Railjack was introduced, we gained a new sentinel, the Nautilus, and with it came a proper beam sentinel weapon, the Verglass. But I heard if you look in the mirror, it spells Glaxon, because this is literally copy-paste the same stats. Anyways, while Nautilus was a pretty interesting sentinel with some nice tricks, the true star of the show was definitely the new weapon. Most sentinel weapons are strictly inferior stats-wise to normal weapons. Combine that with the bad sentinel AI and we have a recipe of useless. Most sentinels are just stat sticks, but the Verglass is different. And if you have heard of what Heat and Hair can do from Dystopia's videos lately, this is about to get pretty stupid. We have a proper gun, that's a beam nonetheless, with a neutral disposition and very respectable status. This is perfect for shredding things apart with Heat Inherit, so let's start with the Verglass build. This is your generic Viral Heat Beam weapon. It has an A cold, so we must manually mod on both mods for Viral. This doesn't leave us with too many options in the last slot, but it's normally taken off by a Vigilante Armaments. I managed to snag a Riven for this a while back, but it's only a generic damage and multi-shot Riven. Galvanized mods do not work on Sentinel, so these stats are still pretty useful on them. I opted for Prime Shred because this beam will also be cutting through fodder in the mission and this lets it hit more enemies at once in hallways. Primed Bane is extremely important on this build because, well, Sentinels are barely affected by any arcanes. You can't do stuff like Vigorous Swap on them, they aren't affected by Gun Dish and Overload, they don't have an x list, and they don't have Weapon Arcane slots. So if you want that Heat DOT to slap, you're really gonna want that Bane. This is Steel Path Disruption anyways, it only makes sense to take your best gear. So now you'll see I opted for Jin instead. Why so? This should be pretty obvious. Disruption is an endless game mode and I don't know when you want to leave. When Sentinels shoot, they also draw aggro to themselves, meaning enemies will shoot them back and also maybe even hit you. So Sentinels have a very realistic chance of dying. Jin has infinite lives, like Panzer through the Reawaken precept. This ensures that no matter what happens, our Jin will still be around. I did also slot Primed Regen so that you get some instant revives at the start, which is useful for shorter disruption rotations. There actually aren't that many other mods we can slot, though. The biggest thing here is the unranked assault mode. This is important and I'll get into it later. Fired up spools instantly on Verglass because it is a beam weapon, unlike Death Cube's machine gun. It acts like a special heat mod that scales off existing heat mods. It's very useful for increasing both our heat DOT size and heat weights for more procs from the weapon. The rest of the kit is pretty standard, with the vacuum and radar, which is useful for identifying the fast moving demolist or demolisher, the synth sets to passive reload your guns, and health and shield mods, which will at least prevent instant death in the shorter runs. Now let's talk about Heat Inherit. This is the name Dystopia gave this combo based on the underlying mechanics of heat DOTs. So how does heat work? The main difference for heat versus other bleeds is that proccing heat refreshes all heat stack timers, meaning you will retain full heat damage no matter when you shoot so long as you stack another heat proc before they expire. Every single stack will continue doing damage forever until you stop shooting long enough that the 6 second duration ends at which every single heat proc will expire at the same time. So this means heat has infinitely scaling damage, but how is this DOT calculated? Well, most of it is based off of the first stack. It uses the base damage of your current weapon for every single stack you apply, but it always uses the heat mod percentage and bane percentage of the weapon used to deal the very first stack. So you want to apply the first stack with a weapon that has as high heat mod percent as possible and as high bane percentage as possible, and then follow that up with your standard heat DPS weapon that probably has higher base damage. It will take the base damage of your DPS weapon and apply the primer's heat percentage and bane percentage to it and also multiply it by the new bane again on your DPS weapon. So it is important to include bane on the second weapon as well. In short words, if you prime with a weapon using say 500% heat and 100% bane, and then DPS with 100% heat and 50% bane, all stacks from the DPS weapon will be calculated using the new weapon's base damage, but 500% heat and 100% bane instead, and also multiplied by the 50% bane. The heat percentage on the DPS weapon is only there to continue applying more heat procs and not for actual heat damage. In Dystopia's words, the DPS weapon inherits the heat percentage and bane percentage of the primer, hence naming it Heat Inherit. 
Now we've already seen something like this before. This is the equivalent of offloading Viral from a weapon to Panzer or a Primer so that we can fit more damage on the weapon itself. The DPS weapon is optimized for, well, DPS, while the Primer is set up either to maximize Viral stacks or in this case maximize Heat and Bane percentages. Funny thing is Verglass still has the mod Viral to get pure heat because it is innate cold, but most weapon setups that can DPS with heat inherent will run pure heat as the element to maximize the proc ratio and push the quantity of heat procs much higher. Our primer today is Spectra Vandal. I've chosen this weapon because it is a beam, meaning it applies status rapidly and quickly and it also has sky high disposition. You can see the build is a bit different from a normal primer. I have both Scorch and Prime Tita Charge slotted to get that 225% heat, which will be used for our Verglass calculations later. I've also slotted the Primed Expel Grenier or whatever faction you'll be facing, and stack this on top with a Riven that also has a Grenier Bane again. The perfect Riven would have more heat, more of a desired faction Bane, and more multi-shot or status or fire rate or just even a second bane if you want the Riven to be multi-purpose for more factions. Basically, you want to apply a lot of status quickly and reliably. This build only has Viral and Heat, but that's because Verglass and other Sentinel weapons cannot proc condition overload stacks. Otherwise, you would build this for more elements to stack more base damage on your DPS weapon with Galvanize, Shot, Savvy, or Aptitude. Tysis would be a very good primer for this as it has Impact Puncture and Slash and Corrosive already as well as Sky High status. Pistols are better as primers because they have Prime T to charge to maximize heat percentage, which primaries lack. The rest of this build is just quality of life to apply stacks reliably. Ruinous Extension increases the beam range from 22 to 30 meters. Now this is why our Jin actually had an unranked assault mode. As I explained, we want to apply the first heat stack with a primer as it has the highest heat percent and bane percent. So we want to make sure that Spectra has higher range than our Sentinel to prevent Verglass from shooting first. The Ember build I'm bringing is mainly focused around DPS, so most of our CC actually will be coming from Cedo's alt fire instead. This is a viral radiation build. It also force procs blasts on the alt fire as well as all four primary elements. Shooting this into enemies will turn on their friendly fire, knocking them down, and also slow them. I'm adding 60% extra status duration to drag this effect out much longer since this is really only our true hard CC. You can recall the glaive early after hitting the crowd enough by just tapping your alt fire again. This way you don't have to wait out its entire travel time. This will be your main way to safely get between areas or clear them out and prime for your verglass to clear the trash mobs while farming the next key drop for the demo. Soft hands is nice for the holster speed as you will obviously be using both of your guns. Vastlock is our melee today and completes the loadout. It is essentially a quality of life build focused around armor, stripping. I have some mods to make our heavy attack faster if we accidentally use it, as well as dispatch overdrive if you want extra movement speed. This is the last key to shutting down demos and letting our Verglass keep procs wreak havoc. I'm bringing Xenaric for the energy economy. Energy Drain can technically screw us over as a conduit buff, but it is still possible to kill demos even without our abilities. As we aren't keeping a high KPS since we are hunting mostly demos, going Vazarin is risky unless you have an energy bot on your team. I would recommend Hildren for the ultimate support. If you want to see my crazy Hildren support build that completely eclipses EV Trin, click the card at the top right. She gives infinite energy, over shields, increased shield gate to your entire team, armor strip, and turns her Balefire Charger into a nuke. This is literally the best possible frame you can use for future team events, like Operation Leaderboards. Finally, let's take a look at that Ember, Build. This is a rather pricey setup where I'd rather run Prime Flow and a maximized Rolling Guard if I had the right polarities. Umbral Intensify would be nice too, but the build is currently functional still. Basically, we're bringing a high strength Fireball Frenzy to give us massive heat weight on our Spectra Primer for DPS calculations once Verglass starts shooting, and also to add massive weight onto Verglass and increase the odds of proccing heat by a lot. This same super high strength will also be used for Roar, which double dips on DOTs and acts like a universal Bane. This build gives us an additional 92.4% Bane. In total, the heat DOTs from Verglass will do 7.46 times more damage purely due to the Banes present on our loadout. Then you still have Viral and Armor Strip, etc. It would be even higher if we were running Umbral Intensify. Narrow-minded for that high duration since none of the other abilities on the build require range except Fire Blast, but we will only really be using Fire Blast to keep our Immolation Bar below 100% and draining our energy. Otherwise, CC is coming from Cedo's Alt Fire and Armor Strip is coming from Vastalok. Immolation will still come in handy for providing that sweet damage reduction which will be useful up to a point. This is not a build intended for level cap, as for god's sake you're using a sentinel to DPS, but if you go that distance, immolation will eventually become useless. 
That said, a max out bar will still be useful for a full strip fire blast if you really want to in a crowd. Brief Respite will let us instantly regenerate all our shields with a single cast of our 2, 3, or 4, or 2 cast of our 1. And Prime Shirt Footed ensures we never miss our chance at killing the demo in time. Arcane Strike is present to make our armor stripping with Vastalock easier, but honestly, this is a free slot. You could put Arcane Deflection or something to stop DOTs from killing you even after you get out of range. It won't stop Toxin though, because that will completely bypass your shield gate. And that's about it. Here's a quick showcase of how high the damage gets in Simulacrum testing. I'm going to show you what happens if I apply the first heat with Verglass before tapping it with Spectra, and then I will show you the damage increase when I tag it with Spectra first for the Heat Inherit strat. The gap won't be as massive as without our ability, since Roar and Fireball Frenzy does dilute the Bane and Heat percentage disparities between Spectra and Verglass. So here is without Heat Inherit. And here is with Heat Inherit. Noticeable damage increase, see? And it would be even more if the Spectre Riven had Heat on it. I'm looking for the perfect Ribbon that terrible. would have our desired Bane as well as Heat. Now for the remaining footage, I'm just going to show you how it played out in Steel Path Disruption. This was a solo run. Keep in mind this is not intended to be a meta build, it is literally a shitpost of more fun ways to play the game. If you want to try this out, feel free to do so, but don't expect this to be super successful. You can even do this on another frame, like Gloom Roar builds for ease of dealing with the demo, but then you definitely want a ribbon with heat on it to increase the heat weighting versus Spectre or whatever primer you are using since you don't have Fireball Frenzy. Roar makes up for the lack of Bane on the Riven though. I would say I have a lot of fun messing around with this and thanks to Dystopia for helping me out answering a few questions I had. I could wait for the right Riven, or do this in a team and get much better performance, but well, I wanted to get you this video out sooner than never. What did you think? You can use Heat Inherit with any DPS weapon you choose, if you're intending to burn them down with Heat DOT DPS. The only difference compared to normal primers is that you're actually running Prime Heat to charge instead of another mod for more heat weight and also running a Bane you normally don't bother including on primers. That's it. If you want to see the original explanation Dystopia provided on Heat Inherit strats, check them out in the description below or the pinned comment. He is an epic endurance runner I'm lucky to be friends with. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering the Tempest story and the Sisters of Parvos updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info more once new war info drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.